So it's in the last 20 years that the shift has happened in my discipline and the first round of connections were made uh, with the, like for instance, in film you can see many types of perspectives. Okay? You can have a high angle view of the world.
picture, this is a moment in the film that in an apartment block, the camera is trying to access several apartments at the same time. Now you can never do that when there are walls, you can't move through walls. But what is the camera able to do in this sequence you'll be able to see as to the
is a result of a certain kind of history in Bombay. And I'll go back and there are other scholars, Thomas Bloom, Hansel, which uh, some of you would know, has written this very uh, interesting essay um, uh, in a book on called Wages of Violence, which is the history of the Shiv Sena and the way Shiv Sena has, um, taken, has had this taken control of Bombay. There's one chapter called Inside the Muslim in, in the Muslim Mahalla, which actually looks at Central Bombay. And in that Central Bombay place, he's basically showing you a world and is producing a spatial map, literally, because he's using his eye. Because when I read it, I felt it was written with a cinematic eye, because he's walking through this space and taking, you know, he's seeing advertisements for the Gulf to go to the Gulf, he's seeing uh, residents all digested in a home trying to produce all, uh, uh, little things that they can sell in the market and he captures the whole world of abject despair in the post textile strike period. 1982 was the longest textile strike in Bombay and that world he produces through a spatial mass. He gives it a kind of spatial articulation and he shows you know, this congestion, this crowd in the middle of that there are multi vans there are cell phones, there are new networks, there are dreams of making it pay, there is Daoud Ibrahim, this is also Daoud Ibrahim's constituency and in this world they have also lived through Bombay riots, they have seen that kind of crisis. That world is captured in that chapter almost cinematically. And what these underworld films do, as opposed to the big Dutch Chopra currently over films, is that they access these locations. No, they are like haunted locations now. Former mill districts where people uh, work and the entire textile um, district has become like a ghost town now which is now being taken over by malls and things like multiplexes. That entire world is going to be retained in this in these gangster films. Because gangster films as a genre, you cannot produce gangster films sitting in lavish interior spaces. As a form, it requires navigation of the city. It requires access to the darker side of the city. And if you go back to a film like Satya, you will see that world is produced. I am going to show you one clip from Satya. Uh, this is a moment in the... How many of you have seen Satya? Please, some of you have seen Satya. So in the film, you will... It's a, it's a you know, simple tale. Uh, at one level, it's drawing on the conflict between Shota Rajan and Dao Vikrani, but they don't may name them. But uh, this is a moment in the film where a, fully, uh, where a film producer has been killed. They are all assassins. They uh, killed this film producer. And uh, they are now on the run. Two of them. Two of these gangsters, they are on the run. And you will see this is the map of globalized Bombay, which looks very different from Kabhi Kushi, Kabhi Gav, or Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, or all the other candy cross films that have emerged in the last 50, 60 years. You will see a very different and this is what I mean, that when you look at these films, you have to train yourself to think in terms of what are these new maps that these films have produced. Thank you. 
background, you see the coke uh, man come in, but he runs when he runs, and the whole film produces spaces like this, half-constructed buildings, uh, uh, abandoned uh, old mills uh, where these guys are um, uh, functioning from, and that space that he runs through, this is the, this is the kind of post-Covid landscape that Thomas Brown Hansen describes in that chapter inside this Mahala, where he gives a, you know, it's a kind of uh, experience that is given, uh, that is articulated through the language of space. You actually see it, the, you see the signs of the crisis in the space and, and it's marked by this kind of decay. You see this decay and breakdown and clothes hanging on both sides. This is the kind of modern Bombay that everybody, uh, that some of the big filmmakers do not want to actually address at all. And so these are locations that have been captured by these uh, underworld gangster films. And so the figure of the gangster is a very important figure who allows you access to certain kinds of urban space. And it's not just true for India. The gangster film genre is a very recent phenomenon in India within the last few decades. But if you look at the entire history of gangster films from the 1930s onwards, it started in Hollywood and was linked directly to liquor prohibition debates in Hollywood. And what happened in the Hollywood was for the first time in 1929-30 uh, when sound makes it empty. Before sound, we had silent cinema. And for the first time with sound, you could hear the uh, speech of migrants in the US on screen. And the gangster film genre was actually born at that time because you need sound for gangster films. And that um, uh, was one of the big targets. They thought that gangster films were producing this kind of immoral landscape and we were uh, listening to this uh, the, the gibberish language of all these migrants who had been in the uh, United States. So it has a very uh, complicated history and it has always been about uh, uh, producing an understanding of what is considered a legitimate world by bringing the legitimate and the legitimate world together, the illegal and the legal together around these two worlds. So that's the kind of history of the gangster film form. So that is one part of, one way to think of an archive. This is the, the gangster film in different parts of the world emerges around moments of depression, economic crisis, social unrest, you'll always see. And if you think about Satya, Satya is ultimately about housing crisis, which is a very major issue in Bombay. Because he becomes an assassin for no other reason but to get himself a who comes from somewhere, there's no explanation given uh, for why he uh, uh, gets into a world of crime. But he needs a place to stay and the gang world enables him to access a room to stay. I want to show you now a sequence from um, another film called Ekha Sinati. Have you seen Ekha Sinati? It's a, a female vigilante film uh, made in 2003 uh, after Satya. And this is a film that captures what we, you know, one, people in Bombay could identify with the kind of single woman's uh, experience in Bombay. But does it very interestingly moving away from the conventions of uh, Hindi cinema. So at a simple level, it's the story of a woman who has been um, sort of uh, deliberately, uh, uh, so uh, she has a relationship with Saif Ali Khan who uh, then uh, gets her embroiled in a whole plot quite deliberately and she goes to prison for the crime that she never committed. And the film begins with a flashback. She's in prison and in prison she becomes empowered and then she um, comes back to take her revenge. The first part of the film, I mean, when I first saw the film, within the first half an hour when I started watching the film, I knew this person barely understands how cities work. And he does it very deliberately because the first half hour is about the banal, the mundane, all of which is also central to urban life. The, the boredom of everyday life, he captures this kind of mundane quality of everyday life in the life of a single woman. And then systematically that world gets destroyed. And she becomes a different kind of person when she comes out of prison. And when she comes out of prison, her empowerment goes hand in hand with this new kind of Bombay and then two cities uh, in this moment of globalization, it, it captures the experience and one of the questions perhaps in the discussion you could think about is why is Delhi becoming such an important space in Hindi cinema uh, because it was never this kind of 
this is the first, the first sequence to make a scene of where she is in prison and if she comes back, she is going back to her class and she comes back to her uh, apartment. Nothing happens actually. And you will see the way in which this mundane quality is actually uh, presented.
stranger because this is the experience and this is the whole thing about the stranger, the other stranger, is she thinks that she knows who he is and he's actually going to turn out uh, to be somebody quite different and he becomes, he's a part of, the, uh, of the another world again. And then she goes to prison. That's where she meets, goes to women's prison and there she meets all kinds of people who are being in prison for all kinds of different things and she meets and encounters a completely different kind of social world in prison. All kinds of different characters. And that's where she changes. And then she just develops a good decides to take revenge. But it's a revenge film, She comes out from this. And then she, the first place she goes to is Central Bombay to meet an animal person to get herself a gun. And then she comes to Delhi because she knows that Sam Khan has come to Delhi. So the entire narrative is created to move through all these different spaces and she moves from Bombay to Delhi. I am going to show you that sequence when she arrives in there and see how her face, her expression and from a kind of limited movement in Bombay to this kind of devouring of space. You know, now through her, we are seeing a transformed Delhi and she is also getting empowered as she moves through this, these spaces. You will see it very clearly.
the the changing landscape from Delhi. The whole film is actually about Delhi's transforming. It's from the early Delhi film that shows the changing because you see a lot of these places that go down and uh, new kinds of malls that have emerged in Delhi in the last ten years. So you get that simple sense. But her journey, her internal journey, is being uh, is uh, being produced through this kind of spatial map. And this is what we refer to as the atlas of emotion. You know that this emotion, this geography of emotion, is actually being created through this kind of spatial narrative, the spatial transformation. So if the gangster film Satya is a particular kind of map, this is about interiority. It's about the inner crisis which is displaced onto this uh, urban transformation. And I'm going to show you one last clip and, and then we can have a discussion. This is a, uh, because you've seen these two films, which both films I actually like and I think what they managed to do so is quite interesting. They enter the sociological category of the single woman's uh, life in Bombay and, the, and, and actually does something quite interesting uh, with it. And producing a very inventive art type of the city. Uh, I want to show you a film which I don't like now, a clip from a film which I don't like, very well made film. But these are the more disturbing things that are emerging now. And this is the film that was uh, uh, released just a few years ago, 2008. And this is Raj uh, Kumar Ame. I don't know how many of you have seen Ame. Okay, now the film, story of the film, for those of you who have not seen it, is it's about an NRI Muslim who comes to Bombay for the first time. And uh, he's come to meet his family and from the airport itself he's facing this kind of communal uh, hostility uh, at the airport because uh, his bags are checked several times. So he's tapping into this new uh, situation in the world, uh, all over the world, including in India. And uh, his bags are checked several times and he says, if my name was Amar and not Ami, would you have done this with my clothes? Um, and then he manages to get out of the airport somebody throws a cell phone at him. And then from that point onwards, he is now part of a new network surveillance machine in which uh, there is a kingpin and he is the bad Muslim. And NRI Muslim is the good Muslim who comes to Bombay and he has this whole network, he is now followed by this entire uh, group of uh, Muslim characters in the city of Bombay and he is making just, the film is about one day in the life and it ends in his suicide and he, he kills himself at the end. But he is told to plant a bomb. Uh, he has, he's supposed to plant a bomb in a bus. And if he doesn't do that, his entire family has been kidnapped and they will be killed. That is the threat. And they use the cell phone to track him. So there's a whole surveillance machine at work. And what you actually see is the same space. You know, the entry to Central Broadway and he's uh, in, in, in the kingpin. The whole film is a conversation between the kingpin and this guy who comes from London to Bombay. And he's been forced to go through the city of Bombay and the kingpin is constantly telling him, see how the Muslims live. Look at the kind of uh, situation they are in. And that's the journey that this man is being forced to make. Now, at one level, when I actually asked the filmmaker, I said, you don't even see that you use the worst kind of stereotypes in the film. So, the yeah, whole uh, journey through the butcher's alley and the constant association between butchery and Islam is made in the film. And this is the kind of uh, more disturbing map that is also emerging. I mean, there's not just the kind of other maps that I've shown you, but these are the kinds of maps that are shown where the only Muslim who's not a terrorist coming from London and almost every Muslim in Bombay is shown as part of a terrorist film. And I'm going to show you this. It's a very well made film. So people got completely seduced by the film and saw this film as a uh, anti-communal film and actually it does something quite contrary to that. And you see in this sequence how the surveillance machinery is uh, more
मेरे परिवार को पाना कुछ नहीं होता उनको दुनिया उनको बचाने के लिए जो कहता हूँ वो करता है
Sandal. 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 Sandal.
see what we study for, how does it relate to the other society. Uh, and we try to examine it. Uh, I think there is also uh, a lot of other things, little things which we often take to notice, which I don't want to do uh, the analysis. Uh, but I think uh, one, uh, one simple thing which I would want to point out to is that uh, movies like Satya uh, or Ekazina, which you uh, 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 it shows the reality, and as uh, as uh, also pointed out, that we will find uh, these movies can also be can, can be called a kind of postmodern uh, sort of movie. Specifically, Satya is showing a, a darker side, probably, of a certain place of Mumbai, which is often missed out, which uh, you also pointed out, which is often missed out in few cinemas. Uh, but uh, these cinemas like these, most uh, what I see that cinemas like these, uh, Satya or Which 
brought to small town to move over. That space suddenly gets merged in. But these are the big stars. The bug is the big star film where the cancer perception is not. So you can't make comparisons with the star films. None of these filmmakers are even trying to remotely come. It's like sociologists trying to be a journalist uh, of the uh, Time magazine or something. You know, you have these the academics have a certain circulation and these people may not be able to match there. And if the, 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 the debate cannot be about reaching the scale of the uh, of a Shah Khan release, which is the 100 crore film, or a Salman Khan release, which is straight upon 100 crores in the first degree. That's a different kind of scale altogether. But what I'm saying is that these new filmmakers, actually, in the more recent past, there is a kind of urban imagination at work in their filmmaking practice. More than if we current you are in the UK, if you will remember, that is something I mentioned in the book. Um, if you remember Tabi Kushi Kabi Kam, there's a whole Chani Chowk sequence. You compare that Chani Chowk to Ekasina Thi Chani Chowk, that Chani Chowk was created in a set in Bombay. It was completely sanitized. The art director said that he painted when he came to Chani so he couldn't handle the dirt to the ground. So he went back to Bombay and created a set which was so clean and neat and everything that it seems to look like Chani Chok at all. So it's an effect. Ultimately, it is that effect. You don't realize how much we are drawn to the effect of cinema. And just to go back to your question, that we, no, we respond to the aesthetic also in terms of what you see, what you feel about spaces like this, and what you get drawn to. And there are not always things that one can explain clearly why you are drawn to certain things and not drawn to. But the fact is that these filmmakers are producing a language that is quite different from the mainstream filmmakers' language, the way in which they produce them or they make their films do. It's a very different kind of imagination. So is that what is more interesting than I know, I ask a question. I mean, uh, it's always fun listening to you with all these visuals. But, uh, Really? Oh, <laughs> so much for 
answer or something like that. It's not just a simple math. No, it's no, a very no, complex math. The math can be four into pieces and put like together like a jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. So, but maps are also real. Yeah. Also, yeah. you know, they say how you draw the India Pakistan border, yes. what you will put there, what color flag will uh, fly, and you can produce, you know, the, uh, the communists can produce a red map and put red flags everywhere. And so, so, maps are also there. But what happens in Zika Bajos, what, what makes it interesting? is that he foregrounds the act of construction in the village itself by showing uh, the camera person run around the city, show, then they show what they are doing at the editing table and walking through that and then they show people watching the film. So the entire institution of cinema is mapped onto the rhythms of the city. And the two unfold together uh, in the film. So he's reflexive, he's drawing attention to the craft of the film. And absolutely, he does this kind of hearing uh, very interesting. He lets you do it, really get into the rhythm. It's a kind of poetic film of authenticity. And then he suddenly breaks this building collapse uh, in that shot. This is close to the end of the film. Uh, suddenly, the building moves uh, 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 like that. And that is the, you know, that even the, that, um, there are two films, very important films of the 20s. One is Nandaku Movie Camera. There's a German film called Berlin Symphony of the City, made in 1957 by Walter Rothman. Uh, both films have acquired major position in the history of the cinema city debates because both films uh, deal with uh, uh, urban rhythm and urban life, and that's about Berlin, but make quite different things in line with the movie camera. And in Berlin Symphony of the City, the camera is also one way it captures everything from, you know, it's a sort of distant days where it's Berlin.
well and free because this white space of things is increasingly more